Sometimes I'll, I'll start talking about something and it gets a lot of traction. Okay. And I'll think to myself, is it that there's just a lot more people who need to hear this thing right now? Or is it just because I'm going through this thing and I'm now speaking from my experience? And it's always been that way. So like with the speaking about C-sections, mm -hmm. presumably people were struggling with this a great deal maybe back when you first started your YouTube account. But mm -hmm. it maybe just feels like today people are struggling in that way. Or yes, is this new? I think, or? I think it's always been. I think some women struggle with a vast, like way more than other women, depending on their upbringing, depending on what they were raised to believe about birth and like our, our individual, you like unique spirits as uh, women, right? Some of us, it, it, it's very just, it's just such, such a personal thing. But I think me sharing about it has been like, it's come to light for me seeing like, oh, this has been something women have been struggling with all along. And mm. I, I will continue to talk about it. I had one gal, it's the reason I'm still on Instagram. I struggle with Instagram too. Um, I think it's one of the nicer places on social media, but she sent me a direct message. She said, Emily, I was in labor and delivery and they came and they said, it's not going to happen. And they had me sign the papers and she said, I thought of you. Mm. And I thought if Emily can do this, I can do this too. It's beautiful. And I said, I will stay That's and continue beautiful. to preach, you know, Bless bring you. glad tidings to women. Um, you know, and it's it's not by my own thing. This is something the Lord says. I want you to share about this. I want you to keep sharing about this. And so when a woman says that, it's not like, oh, I'm so great. You know, I love sharing about this. It's like, no, the Lord's sent me to bring glad tidings in this area to say, yeah, when you're signing those papers, you're a champion. Mm. You are a champion <laughs> beyond champion beyond champion. And this and like this is my body given up for you will be engraved on your body for the rest of your life. I remember Scott Hahn saying something about that, like that the scars that Kimberly bore, mm -hmm. bears are the most beautiful thing about her because when he sees those scars, it reminds him of the sacrifice she made for their children. Isn't it so magnificent? <laughs> it really is. It really is magnificent. Yeah. It tells a story. What, what Daniel did well, your husband. He yeah. sounds so great. Yeah. How? I mean, is there advice that you think men need to hear if their wives are going through a C-section? Other than just be supportive. <laughs> yeah. I think there's no, like, be supportive is, is true. You feel so powerless. And that's what I felt in my husband when we were, we were there, just holding hands and just kind of weeping with each other. Like... As a man, you're like, I want to, I want to fix it. Like, mm -hmm. I want to protect her. I want to protect my child. You can do nothing. You can do nothing except stand there and put on that bunny suit. You got to put on your whole like bunny suit. I don't know the technical term. <laughs> you medical people Not out there might know. Not an actual bunny suit, just to be clear. Um, <laughs> your medical hat and the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, and you, you, useless you, as a chocolate teapot, we'd say in Australia. One hundred percent. And really, yeah. you cannot say enough supportive words. Yeah, you're a champion. You're yes. doing amazing. I believe yes. in you. I love you. All of that <laughs> goes such a long way. And not even just on the day, the day after. Like mm. it is a process of coming to terms with this for women. There's no because, app for that. like I said, you don't think it's going to happen to you. Mm. You don't think your baby's going to be born on the freeway. You don't think you're going to be on the operating table. It's a process of coming to terms and surrendering what you hoped for mm. to accept what was and what is. So in those days and weeks, continue to say, you did so amazing. You're so incredible. You know, your body is beautiful. All those things, the healing is very mm. difficult. The scar healing up. Because um, it's not like you go through this experience and then get to go rest that's you go through this experience, and then you can learn how to breastfeed. Yeah. And then you can learn how to not sleep after. Typically, again. after major surgery, they say take some naps and really, <laughs> really rest. They give you major surgery, which you're awake during. There's yeah. so few major surgeries that you're awake <laughs> during, which is also the spirituality that we're always, the Lord is always in communication with us when He's working with us. Yeah. And then they hand you this baby. Like, imagine having your liver removed and they give you a baby to go in with. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine? They give you this baby and you're like, they just cut seven layers of yeah. my body open and, and they, they asked me to stand up two or three hours later and I'll walk around and, and you have this baby. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Sorry. It's crazy. It's so hard. You're, 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 you're I, yeah, after 41 hours of labor, you're like, I've never been this tired in my whole entire life. <laughs> I thought I was tired. Right. I was wrong. And this I'm not going to sleep for one hour, right? Yeah. For, for the next however long. You, you want to go back to yourself in college when you thought you were tired and give yourself the most condescending pat on the knee and be yeah. like, honey, you don't know what tired is. On November 3rd, 2018, <laughs> You'll you're going to be tired, sister. Well, yeah, you hear about like Hell Week and what the Navy SEALs go through and you're like, please. 
100. <laughs> 100%. You think, uh, yeah, but, uh, but the all of the emotions for the feminine heart in those days, if if a C-section was the route that happened, the like your hormones, you know, are all over the place, you know, as a woman and 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 processing all of it is impossible. Yeah. It's so painful just, it's like and you're challenging. just being strapped into a roller coaster and you just have to ride it out. Like, yes. I'm no longer in control. And you think, when am I going to have time for women? I didn't feel like I had to grieve the birth that I wanted, but when am I going to have time? So women to say to grieve what I, what I, you know, wanted to happen. When am I going to have time to think about like what, like, it, cause it happens so fast. They come in, especially if it's an emergency and a really traumatic mm -hmm. thing and the baby's heart rate is dropping and they come in, you don't have time to process everything that's happening. They whisk you in and they take that baby out as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So to go over it, and I always tell women, if you are struggling, go to see a counselor, go to see a therapist because you need to talk it out. Did you do that? No, I didn't feel like I had to. I, I, cause I told you the whole time, my sister went through this before me mm -hmm. and that was a really big deal too. Her body did the exact same thing as my body did. So, and we're we're very similar to have heard mm -hmm. a very with. similar 100 percent. and um i so hearing about her experience i thought we're very similar we always have been our whole life maybe that could happen to me that helped too um but i didn't feel like i had to go to see a counselor but i've had friends who went you just have to talk about it and you have to walk through some women all of the things that happened that you didn't have time to think about while they were happening and some women have very poor medical experiences where they didn't feel like someone was advocating for them or their husband was trying to say, you know, this is the way that she wants us to go. And it's just too crazy. And sometimes medical, when people know the medical people know what has to happen, like mm -hmm. they're like, it's all, all hands on deck. Nothing matters right now. We got to get this baby yeah, out. Yeah. But to go to talk with someone is so important. I don't think we realized just how much danger my wife was in when she gave birth to our first child. And sometimes that's better. And I think we found out after and like, she was really close to death. Yeah. Because it, it, actually the, the, the anesthetic hadn't settled in as they were cutting her open. <sighs> She's a boss, my wife. See? Like if Joan of Arc met my wife, Joan of Arc might be a little shy. Like and she's, be she's impressed she's a, by who she is. She's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Those moments, yeah. The, uh, the all those steps of like <clears throat> anesthesia and all that stuff. That was the other thing too with my second birth. Um, they say like, can you feel this? Can you feel this when you're awake? Can you feel this? And you're like, they're about can to. Can you open. Yeah, right. Sorry, no, no I, I mean, you're just so helpless. And I said. Uh, yes, yes, I still can, I still can. And then the anesthesiologist, she she leans in my hair, she said, okay, Emily, surgery has started. Oh. And the, I thought you were talking about after the surgery. No, and you're this trying to, isn't yeah, my yeah, second yeah, 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 one. Yeah, okay, can you and feel this? And for me, in the sense, spiritual yeah. life, that is, the Lord knows when you're ready for him to start work. If you've gotten on the operating table, you can tell him, Lord, I'm not ready, Lord, I'm not ready, Lord, I'm not ready. And he is gonna start that work, mm. whether you like it or not. Um, if you've gotten on that operating table and you've submitted to the yeah. work, you've opened yourself in that way to say, all right, Lord. Yep, I know that feeling. Yes, don't you? I mean, I don't know what it's like to have my no. womb cut open, but I do know in what it's like for the Lord life. to go to town. Uh, we can get into this later if it interests you, but I went on a Bob Shoots retreat a couple of years ago and I, I showed up and just started weeping. And I'm like, what the friggin' hell is happening? And I just Surgery that's the, is happening. That's exactly what the Lord said to me. Like, we're, we're going to surgery. I need nothing from you. Nothing. I just need you to lay down. Okay. <laughs> it was beautiful. It's so true. And brutal. And you ha it's brutal. Uh, yeah. In the spiritual life, the, the, the Lord as surgeon, it is yeah. difficult yeah. and gritty and ugly sometimes and painful. Another thing that the Lord has um, shown me through this is sometimes they can lift the baby up and show the baby to you. That's what my Sometimes wife, they can't. My wife did that with the last one, yeah. Oh, second to last one. Sometimes the Lord can show us the fruits of the work that he's doing within us. Yeah. And sometimes he knows that he cannot mm. and and it's it's painful sometimes they whisk the baby away and that's a very painful thing yeah. but he knows like i can't show you i can't show you the fruits of what i'm doing right now but you're gonna see it yes um and sometimes you see these glimpses like through a retreat you see these yes. glimpses you're like oh this is the fruits of what the lord is doing Beautiful. and sometimes he can't show you or he knows that it's not going to benefit you to show you in that moment Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you liked and if you loved, subscribe.